All right, um, before I start my presentation, raise your hand if you have heard of this three-letter acronym called NEO. Wow, wow, 80%. I see some very familiar faces as well. Um, so my name is Ganesh Ayer. I joined this company uh, about seven and a half years ago. Um, I spent about four, a little over four years at Tesla prior to joining NEO. So who is NEO? So we call ourselves as a lifestyle brand. Our vision is to shape a joyful lifestyle for our users by leveraging the next generation technologies in AI, autonomous driving, and e-power e e train engineering technologies. So we are a pretty young company, um, conceived in you know, 2012, but officially launched in uh, November of 2015, or 2014, excuse me. And as I mentioned, we strive to shape a joyful lifestyle for our users uh, and becomes the, the best user enterprise in the world. Um, and uh, how do we find the users? Again, the, the, the smart EV is a core product that we manufacture. Um, and then it's, it's, it's the way to find the users to uh, you know, find them, nurture them, and grow into a community. So we believe community-based business model is the next big disruption, uh, in, especially in the context of uh, automotive industry is coming. So uh, where are we located? This is a quick uh, snapshot of where NEO is located. Um, when I joined, the company was uh, less than about 900 employees. As we speak, we are about 36,000 plus um, um, engineers predominantly around the world. And then on the left-hand side, that's where I head up uh, San Jose, which is a Silicon Valley or North American headquarters. And on the right-hand side is where the company was born back in Shanghai and in Beijing, and we expanded to many other cities. And then in, the, in Europe, uh, about a couple of years ago, we entered European continent via Norway. And then last year, we entered uh, five other markets in, in, in Europe, predominantly Germany, Sweden, Denmark, and the Netherlands. So, so this is a second generation uh, vehicle, vehicles that we have uh, deployed, meaning delivered um, as of today. So NT2 stands for the, next, the second generation of Neo technology platform, um, you know, the platform that we built. And then of which we have deployed eight distinct smart EVs. So smart connected premium electric and of course autonomous vehicles. So the first generation, uh, we mainly built uh, three products, um, namely ES8, ES6, and the EC6. So those cars we don't manufacture anymore. So it's a second generation is what uh, the team has been focusing on. Very excited to report as of yesterday, nearly 400,000 uh, premium, premium vehicles have been delivered to our users uh, throughout mainland China as well as in Europe. So as we all know, the, the industry, automotive industry and smart EV industry is changing um, you know, dramatically uh, from a, you know, the uh, mechatronics to electronics to now it is completely digital, not even software, right? So everything is digital now. So uh, the vehicle has to be much more smarter than what it is today. So that's why we call it as smart plus EV. That is where the future, uh, as we all know, is heading. And then, of course, the, the entire vehicle needs to be upgradable, uh, be it just a software, firmware, or even the hardware itself should be able to, uh, to be upgraded. But so at NEO, um, I think many of you are familiar with this term, FOTA, firmware over there update. Uh, you know, back in 2012, 2013, uh, Tesla started their process. And at NEO now, it's nearly 100% of our, uh, the entire software bits and the firmware bits can be easily upgraded and then pushed to our vehicle fleet. Um, so that's, uh, so it's uh, completely now upgradable. And I'll touch on the hardware upgrade in a little later. Essentially, the entire battery, as you know, which is a single most expensive component in any electric vehicle to date, uh, be it Tesla, be it any other models, uh, low end to the, the premium luxury segment. So you know, once you buy a, you know, expensive battery pack, unless it's upgradable, then you know, it's, a, it's a concern, right? So we focused on how can we solve that use case also for our users. And again, I will touch on that a bit later. And then the horsepower is now changing to compute power, right? As the vehicle becomes much more smarter, um, so it's all about the computing power, or the computing, um, the, the capability that ex exists within the chipset or the SOC is it's one of the critical factors. And then the vehicle is moving towards more of a lightweight approach. So it's no longer the steel-based, uh, uh, you know, the chassis, so it's mostly moving to the lightweight aluminum and then even carbon fiber to a certain extent. So there's a lot of innovation going in that direction. And, 
And I was in Europe, uh, you know, three weeks ago, three and a half weeks ago, and then there was an automotive OEM symposium where almost all of the OEMs are talking about now uh, no longer the vehicle or the product that they sell. It's mainly the user experience, right? So everything is moving towards more of a immersive user experience-based um, selling. Otherwise, customers like me and you, or the users like me and you, um, there's no differentiation. So it needs to be that uh, differentiated by um, the unique user experiences. And of course, the whole industry is now moving towards autonomous, right? Whether it's a, you know, it's a small robot all the way through now vehicles. Now we have seen, starting with Tesla, now it is pretty much every OEM is investing billions of billions of dollars towards getting to that stage. Um, you know, eventually, you know, I, I, I jokingly I say even, uh, you know, steering as an option. You know, maybe a day that will come where you may be asked, would you like a steering wheel? So that's where the industry and the innovation is heading. So putting that into context of about NEO, and then I'll touch on the AI, a couple of applications that, uh, that's very relevant for smart EV industry. So, um, you know, battery is one area that's still, um, in my humble opinion, that is still yet to be, you know, more innovation yet to come. Um, so we started with the lithium-ion batteries, and then NEO also, we, our predominant supplier is CATL. Um, so they give us the, the lithium ion cells, and then we have our own factory where we put those cells into modules, and the modules go into a pack. So you know, the, you know, there's a lot of innovation in the packaging also of the, of, the, of the cells, which we are extremely proud of. And the other aspect is the e-powertrain. Um, so that's, that's a fundamental uh, shift in the innovation from the traditional motors to more of an e-powertrain based. So uh, we have a lot of innovations going in that nowadays. Um, it's, it's again owned by, um, you know, we have a proprietary factory uh, back in, in Nanjing, which is a city just outside of Shanghai. And the core, the last three are the, the, the digital brain of the car, if you will. Um, the, from the top, it's, it's a smart guard uh, gateway, right? So most of the tier one OEMs, you know, they sell ECUs, the electronic control units, which you can buy it and then integrate with a newer uh, vehicle ecosystem. But the challenge with that is, uh, I believe, it is still the innovation you are limited at the mercy of the tier one or tier two OEMs. So if you are a startup uh, like we do, like we are only an eight and a half year old company, um, still able to deliver nearly 400,000 units, how can we innovate faster without uh, getting constrained by the, the tier ones or tier twos or any of those OEMs or the, or, the, or the partners and suppliers? So we created our own internal smart gateway uh, starting with our first generation NT1 products, all those eight mod models that you saw in NT2, and we're working on NT3, where the, one of the core innovation areas is mainly the, the smart gateway, which sends the controls to all of the, uh, all of the ECUs, so that it's the digital brain of the car. And then the next is the smart cockpit, or the digital cockpit. Um, you'll, you'll see that little emoji type uh, little thing that is uh, on that image. So we call her as, uh, it's a she, that's Nomi. Uh, spelled as N-O-M-I. Uh, so Nomi is the, um, you know, it's a digital companion, Neo's digital companion. It's the first uh, production car instantiation of AI. Um, so it's, it's a conversational AI engine. Um, Nomi is physical. As you can see, it's a little physical robot which sits on your dashboard. And Nomi is contextual. So based on the context and then the, you know, the facial recognition and all that, it understands your emotions based on the context. The last is it's emotional. So depending on the situation or your, uh, your feelings, Nomi also reacts accordingly. So you feel like very personable and then a, a digital companion inside the car. Um, so those of you who would like to see this, uh, we have two vehicles, new vehicles uh, parked in the visitor parking. You can see the Nomi in action. You can play with her and then and get, a use, uh, get a feel of it. So that's uh, the first uh, AI application at uh, Neo that uh, you know, we have deployed at scale. Uh, during lunchtime, somebody was asking, you know, it's, uh, what's the take rate of, uh, you know, that, that feature um, in, in the car? So roughly, it's, it's uh, in Norway market, it's uh, more than 95% of the sales are, you know, know me as a feature. Because, you know, users who have little children, that's pretty, uh, pretty interactive, pretty cool, and it's, uh, uh, it's very fun to work with. So, and plus, you know, you can control all of the controls inside the car uh, using Nomi. And last but not least is autonomous driving, which is a complex, complex area. So we have a few individuals here, ex neo who were instrumental in, in architecting the first generation uh, of our autonomous driving ADAS uh, um, you know, features. 
For the NT1, we uh, really partnered with uh, Mobileye. Um, in fact, Neo is the first OEM to work directly with uh, Mobileye from Israel team. And then, uh, so we bought their perception stack and integrated within our system. So, so NT1 is all uh, that, but the second generation, the eight models I showed you earlier, so we partner with NVIDIA. Um, so the Orin uh, chipset, there are four of them inside the car. Um, in fact, I will go through some of the specs a little later. So that's a heavy computing platform inside the car. Um, even though uh, all the cars that, that have all the hardware that is required for the um, you know, level three plus or even close to level four, but we haven't fully deployed um, the, the algorithms inside the car. In fact, on a couple of weeks ago, September 21st to be exact, uh, we started pushing the, the you know, level three plus, the algorithms inside the fleet, um, you know, across the fleet in mainland China. Um, the teams have done a tremendous job in collecting you know, millions and millions of miles of uh, data to make sure that these vehicles are safe and secure to be in the mainland streets of China. So we are extremely proud of having that. Now the vehicle is fully autonomous back in China. We are doing the same thing in Europe as we speak, and then hopefully in the near, near focus, near, near soon, we hope to enter the US market as well. So a little bit about more deep uh, in-depth on the Nomi AI application in, in Smart EV. So it's, as I mentioned, it's the world's first in-vehicle artificial intelligence, and it is contextual and conversational AI. So um, this is slightly outdated, so it's now more than two million conversations are happening per day. That means people are interacting with Nomi, and then there's uh, nearly two million uh, messages are being, conversations are being processed interactively by Nomi. Let's take a look at uh, what some of the, you know, normal use cases that Nomi does. Hi, Nomi. I am here. What can you do? I can do many things. Want to turn on seat heating? Or navigate to some fun place? Maybe open the windows? Take a call, check out the weather, or play music. I'm always here for you. Hi, Nomi. Hey. I'm cold. Done. Hi, Nomi. Yes? How many languages do you speak? Oh, languages are my favorite. I speak English, German, Chinese, and Norwegian fluently. Also, I'm learning Swedish, Danish, Dutch, and some other languages. Hi, Nomi. Yes? Turn on massage in the back seats. Done. Hi, Nomi. Hey. What is your favorite song? Looks like we have similar tastes. I enjoy most of the music you listen to. A quick demonstration, this one I recorded it a couple days ago. This is from our vehicle lab um, in our headquarters here in San Jose. So the inspiration for Nomi as a conversational AI engine in the context of automotive, it came in mainly from our users. So uh, our product management team, we sent them to a field and then collect the feedback from the so-called today's vehicle owners or the vehicle drivers, soccer moms, baseball dads, students, uh, doctors, et cetera, et cetera. So what we learned is, I think it's not a secret, all of us know that the most of the accidents are caused by the human interaction as the drivers. So, but all, all of us should be able to talk while we are driving. And so the inspiration for Nomi came in from that data point from the field, but uh, we're extremely proud that now it is, Nomi speaks multiple languages, we are teaching her even more languages. Uh, one day, hopefully every language around the world, she'll be able to focus. And then it becomes your digital companion, it's not just the car controls, in fact, uh, our vision is to enable Nomi to be the, you know, the, the entire ecosystem player. So you should be able to even connect your home appliances and whatnot in one day. So we are working on that innovation to make her even more smarter. So that's uh, one uh, cool example of uh, um, AI. 
And then, it's, it's, as I mentioned, the, you know, it's not possible without a powerful computing platform behind it. And then we internally call that platform as Atom, uh, which is basically our supercomputing pl uh, platform. And it's ma mainly the NAD, which is a new automated driving, um, you know, uh, the, the main backbone of it. Um, so we, we are leveraging the NVIDIA's ORIN uh, chipset. And then it has a computing of about 1,016 teraflops, which is, do we need it today? Probably not, but we are scaling this, and this, these products are um, you know, here for the future, so we want to uh, create as much computing as possible. And then it has a 48 CPU. I think you can read those specs in there. So we are excited, you know, extremely proud of um, the Atom also, which is powering our, um, the second generation vehicle platforms, and hopefully in the future, for the future generations. So the other cool uh, AI application or robotics application within uh, within Neo, and actually, it's, uh, before I go to the you know details about it, so um, you know back in 2014 when we started the company, um, you know we thought about you know what is the main reason that is impeding the broader adoption of electric vehicles today around the world. It is all concerns around the battery itself, the price of the battery. You know those of you who have been with Tesla from the from the beginning, um, you can relate to it. When Tesla started selling the first Model S, the price of a battery pack used to be about twenty thousand U.S. dollars. So that's similar to a price of a Honda Accord, um, entry-level Honda Accord. So, granted, the price of the battery pack has come down dramatically, but still, today, as we speak, the single most expensive component is still the battery. We thought, how do we reduce that? Uh, you know, th that concern of the battery, um, you know, pricing of the battery so that we can give this uh, electric vehicles in the hands of uh, the middle class people who do not have as much purchasing power. So we went to the drawing board. We said we need to provide an end-to-end -end power replenishment solutions to no matter which segment or which profile of the user it is, whether it's a rich, mediocre, or even a poor individual, but how can we give that electric vehicles in the hands of it? So internally, we came up with this called chargeable, swappable, and upgradable. Um, end to end power replenishment. As a, uh, the name indicates, chargeable is it's nothing but putting the home chargers in your dwellings, be it apartment, homes, or, or whatever. So we provide uh, small, you know, uh, slow chargers as well as fast chargers. But that's still not good enough uh, charging experience, right? You, want, you are expecting the speed of sound one day, the charging speed to go in. So the most uh, cool uh, robotics application we came up with was the swappable, uh, which is one of our crown jewels. Um, you know, back in early days of Tesla, when Tesla tried to do this swapping, but to me, that's not required for countries like uh, United States and Europe, where population density is relatively lower as compared to China, India, or others, where you don't have the luxury of real estate to put in supercharger networks um, in every, every, every corner. Um, so how can we solve the problem? So we, we thought about having a battery swapping as, a, as one of the key innovations, and then so how does that work, right? It's a, if it was easy, um, you know, many companies or many innovator, innovators would have done it. So this is a quick illustration of how this battery swapping really works. It works in less than four minutes. That means before you finish your latte, go to your battery upgraded or swapped. looks complex, it's as simple as that. So it's, uh, you know, it's, it's literally like this uh, size of this stage. It's uh, three parking spots, and one parking spot, think of it, it's for the incoming car that's coming for a swap, the other two parking spots for the robotic systems. So you just drive this. We are on the third generation of Neo Power, uh, Neo Power Swap stations. 
So essentially, you drive your car, or you, you can, through a proprietary app, you can say, I want to schedule this swap at, you know, let's say, you know, the Sacramento area, Power Swap Station, waiting for you there. Once the car reaches there, you park your car in front of the swap station. As you saw in the video, push a button on your instrument cluster. The car will reverse park itself into that, you know, that empty spots. Then after that, you got four minutes to decide whether you want to get out of the car or you get locked for four minutes. Uh, that's, that's pretty much it. And the robotic system comes in. It slightly lifts the car. It unscrews the battery um, and then removes it, put it into an empty slot, takes a fully charged battery, put it back in, screws it back, and it does the validation. You are off. It's, it sounds simple, but it's, a, as you can imagine, smart engineers here in the room. It's a complex piece of engineering, but uh, we believe this is going to drive, help drive more um, electric vehicle adoption because um, still the fastest supercharger that's out there, um, it still it does take about 20 minutes to get nearly 80% state of charge, which is still, it's a lot of time, right? It's, uh, as the fleet size increases, um, God knows there could be some wait, you know, queues in order to get you a turn in. So we thought, you know, so today the premium for, for especially for the millennials and the, and the innovators, as the premium is the time. So how can we give the time back? Well, with the swap station, uh, this um, you know, innovation, you should be able to get your, the entire vehicle um, you know, battery swapped in less than four minutes. And you are giving that extra 15 minutes back for doing something productive stuff. So this innovation also helped us to do one last thing, which is the upgradable. So you, know, you don't have to own or purchase a 100 kilowatt battery, for example, because it comes with a price. With the swap station and the swapping technology being proven, you can go with the entry-level battery pack, which is, let's say, a 70 kilowatt battery. Then that's your normal uh, commute within your you know, home to office or your run your errands and whatnot. But uh, then you, know, you can swap out your battery as many times as you want. So that way, you never have to have that range anxiety issues. But you may still have that one or two use cases you know, once or twice a year where you know, you're really pressed for that four minutes or eight minutes of time. But uh, you know what? I want to upgrade my vehicle. That's where the hardware upgrade part, which I mentioned earlier, comes in. Go to a, one of the swap stations, and you pay a nominal upgrade fee, and then you can upgrade uh, your previously owned 70 kilowatt battery with a 100 or even 150 kilowatt battery in the future. So that gives you the flexibility of not only upgrading your software, but also your, the entire battery itself. So this is another, we thought it's a very cool AI application, robotics application that is driving more smart EV to the mainstream. So these are some stats. Um, so you know, uh, right now it is about nearly 29.5 million. I just looked at the stats before I came here. So it's uh, 29.5 million swaps. That's literally about uh, uh, every minute and 20 seconds a swap is being performed. So the technology is proven. So with that technology being proven, we said, you know, why can't we come up with a new business model? Because again, the, the most expensive component in, battery, in the EV is the battery itself. So why can't we have more purchasing power to those who couldn't afford it? So we said, you know, now technology being proven, why can't we break the smart EV into two financial transactions? One without you know, the, the vehicle, which is a, you know, your chassis plus all of the power electronics, the EDS and, and whatnot. And then you pay a monthly subscription fee for the battery. Think about it. The whole world is now moving as a service model. So we can reduce the charge, charging anxiety, potentially your residual value going down of your investment for an electric. All that leave it to us. So you just subscribe to a 70 kilowatt battery. So it gives, as I said, it's a reduce the initial purchasing of the, the, the price of the car. It, uh, you don't have to worry about the residual value going down of the stress in the battery. And, and the safety aspects, because as we innovate, um, our engineers innovate uh, new battery cell chemistry or even move to a solid state in the future. So you get the latest technology enabled battery cells and then the battery pack in your car. So, so this is where we think the, the industry needs to move in order to drive more EV adoption. But it's, um, you know, we have proven it now. Uh, we're extremely proud that it's over nearly 1,500 approved patents now, still counting. So the third generation uh, swap station, it's capable of uh, holding about 21 batteries uh, fully charged. So this is also bi-directional, meaning if the swap station is fully um, you know, underutilized, for example, should be able to give the energy to the grid and then draw the power vice versa. So it's a bi-directional. So that will be another use, potential use case in the future 
um, you know, I think Tesla came up with this power, uh, the, the power wall, which is mainly powering your small home, right? Or relatively a small to medium home, but still it doesn't have as much capacity, but this could be another use case for drawing and giving the energy to the, to the grid uh, when, you know, during the peak time if you choose to. So this, again, the second, uh, um, you know, real use case application in uh, robotics and AI application is in this. Um, since the vehicles are now connected, so before the patient comes to the swap station for swapping, we can proactively diagnose and then and get the health of each and every car, every, every car out in the field. Right now it's 400,000, so we know exactly what the health. So when the car comes in, for whatever reason, if uh, the incoming car has a slight, you know, either safety concern or whatever concern, so we can actually swap, take the battery out of rotation and then do a deep, detailed disposition plan to figure out before the, the battery can be put back and again safe. Again, this technology enables us to do all those uh, normal use cases. So, uh, so this is our uh, beautiful uh, innovation center here in, uh, in San Jose. We just moved in um, uh, a month ago. Uh, so this is our second generation um, office space here. So extremely proud. So, and with that, thank you so very much. Um, you know, happy to take any questions. I'll be outside during the break. I uh, would love to chat and then learn more about what other innovations uh, can we do together to make this uh, EV revolution a real thing at scale. Thank you.